Hello and welcome to our today's webinar. Before we get started, I would like to share with you the general conditions for this webinar. So this webinar will be recorded by us. Um, this will be done anonymously. So if you do not agree to this term, unfortunately, I have to ask you to leave this meeting. If you have any problems or questions to us in general, please use the chat on the right side. After the presentation, we have a Q&A session where you can place and raise your questions uh, where we can answer to. So this will be done after the presentation and will be done in the chat functionality. So again, welcome to our webinar, Electrification Beyond Measurement for EV Systems and Vehicle Testing Solutions. My name is Alexander Seibel. I'm the head of R&D for, uh, for the Mechatronical Department, uh, which is responsible for the development and validation process of engine, powertrain, e-motor, and chassis dynos. I'm one of uh, two moderators, and I will guide you through the first part of the presentation. The second part of the presentation will be covered by Dirk Kaffenberger. He's our global product manager for chassis dynamometers. Let's start with our philosophy and with a statement. Everything begins with measurement. Let's have a look into our electrifications. So during the last years we have faced during this challenge of electrification a lot of different types of testing from material level testing to component level testing to system level and at the end to full vehicle level testing we have a wide range of experience in these sections and we would like to share with you our solutions to help you and guide you through the daily problems of the development process you have In our last webinars, we have already covered the parts for material and component level testing. And our, in our today's webinar, we would like to focus with you on the civil system level and full vehicle level testing. What is the motivation of having a joint session from system level testing and full vehicle living, level testing? Um, I will come to this in a couple of minutes. So what are the daily problems and uh, the issues we face during the last years um, beside our customers? In the system testing on e-motor and powertrain, we have faced um, a huge shift from the driveline testing from ICE-driven vehicles to new powertrain topologies. Um, and therewith, um, a high increase of the speed and the requirements for e-motor dynos, especially also for e-axles. From the top, from the downcoming, um, on the vehicle side, we have faced a huge shift from uh, the emission side, um, especially for certification, to electrification and also to simulation. As we can see here, a big trend on the market to merge these types of testing into the powertrain testing. So therefore, there is a huge requirement for having a flexible test stand to cover all these types of system testing and full vehicle testings on the powertrain chassis dyno. And therewith, a shift from component and system level testing to full vehicle level testing. Let's have a look into the system testing, especially for e-motor and powertrain. As you might already know, Horiba provides a wide range uh, of different solutions in the field of automotive, from e-motor and gearbox testing to powertrain development for light duty and heavy duty, but also for non-road vehicle like aircrafts and railroads. Um, we cover also not only the regular ICE combustion driven powertrains, but also fuel cell vehicle driven powertrains, full, 
full electrical vehicles and battery electrical vehicles and also hybrids. Let's have a closer look into the solutions we can cover at the e-motor testing. Here we do have a, a small overview about some solutions we can provide and help you with. On the right corner, on the top, we see our modular concept, which we can provide for the e-motor for climatic and non-climatic applications. So this solution we will also see in the powertrain applications because this is a flexible concept we also can use in combination with our powertrain setups. On the right corner here, we see our R&D setup for high-speed e-motor testing. This is designed and validated and also developed in our Horiba location at Horiba Darmstadt in Germany. On the left side, we see a picture from one of our NVH solution where we do have special expertise at, um, especially for high-speed uh, e-motor testing with carbon shafts and special noise isolations. Not only the testing equipment we can cover, we do have also our own location where we can set up contract testing for e-motors. This is done in our location at Oberursel. Let's have a closer look at some custom applications we can provide to you to help you in your daily business. At the e-motor side, we can provide applications from just characterization of your specimen from torque to speed characterization and also short circuit tests to identify your parameters you need to have. But also torque ripple in investigations by using the top torque ripple measurements. And especially here I would come to the um, section of efficiency. We can provide you and help you also with solutions to measure your efficiency of your unit under tests, in this case, uh, your e-motor in combination with your inverter. But not only this, we can provide you also efficiency applications for the whole test stand. From the conditioning unit, by transferring the electrical energy into uh, the cooling energy, but also from the frequency converter up to the air condition and back to the energy grid. Let's have a closer look at Horiba's key components for e-motor testing. This is for sure on the left side our automation and simulation capabilities, which we are covering by our own automation product, Horiba Stars, which is an automation system which has fully integrated devices and also the capability for co-simulation and a huge interface for the common simulation systems that were already on the market. In the middle, we do have testing and measure, measuring. There we already have seen our modular and future-proof concept, which is um, open for the future and can be used for different purpose, also for the powertrain as we come later on. And also we do have um, a wide range of integration for uh, different kind of power analyzers at this point. At the right side, we see our power supply and battery simulation pillar, where we do have own in-house companies at Horiba FuelCon for DC supply and battery simulation. There we have a long experience, especially in the development and design of DC supplies for low voltage and also high voltage applications. I would like to give you a um, a little bit of an insight in our uh, last developments for um, high-speed dynamometers. So as you can see here on the right, there is a picture of uh, an in-house commissioning at Holiba in Darmstadt, where we, do the have, where we do have the applications for up to a speed of 23,000 RPMs with a max power of 300 kilowatts overloaded and a max torque of 600 Newton meters. So at this point, we can offer you also a rated power up to 660 kilowatts and also up to 1050 newton meters by a speed up to 23,000 RPMs. So the complete testbed design and validation 
is done for all parts of this application. And as you can imagine, we have also thinking about the future and um, also working on the next one and two steps in the field of eMotor. Let's have a closer look in our electrified powertrain testing um, and the overview here. So we have a long history and this builds our foundation for the future in electrified powertrains. So since 1960, we delivered more than 10,000 engine and powertrain dynamometers and therefore we have a wide range of technology in this field. As you can see here, from full vehicle testing and the adaptation of the wheels on a powertrain up to a heavy duty climatic and altitude application and also for e-axle and all in light duty area and for the heavy duty area, axles and e-axle testings. But also as we have already seen for the e-motor, NVH testing for a 4E setup, as you can see in the left corner on the bottom. But also a hybrid testing application solution where we can offer. Let's have also a closer look into the overview of custom applications we can provide and help you with. Here we do have some applications listed, but this is just a screenshot. If you have any questions to further applications, you are welcome to get in contact with us. So here we do have, for example, durability and also the efficiency as we already talked about. But especially I would like to focus here a little bit more on the simulation and co-simulation, where it's getting more and more important. We have seen the trend here that simulation helps us and our customers to move the testing area further to the real proving ground and also to move the behavior and feedback of the testings as well. So we are capable to simulate for you and also co-simulate for you the missing parts of the vehicle at this point. Let's take a look also on some insights about our latest high-speed um, development for powertrain. Here we do have our input dyno concept, which is also um, capable to run speeds up to 23,000 RPMs. So this is covered by uh, the low inertia wheel dynos, which are adjustable in high, at high and track for this. So this setup can be um, delivered up to a rated power from 377 kilowatts and a rated torque up to 600 Newton meters. As I already mentioned, this can be up to a speed of 23,000 RPM. So this setup can be extended from the two wheel drive setup, as we see it here, to a four wheel drive setup. And this is also used in the middle, as you can see here, for the e-motor setup. I have already shown to you. Let's have a closer look into our vehicle testing on powertrain. At Horiba, we were able to collect a lot of experience during the last years and during the realization of several projects in light duty and heavy duty applications all over the world. We can provide you with a different kind of sets for vehicle adaptation and also for vehicle lifting. We, we are able, as we will see in um, one of the next slides, to provide you solutions that are customizable. So we can offer you some very simple applications for that, but also tailored to the needs you have. But most important for electrical vehicles are the safety concepts. So that means we can help you with the right safety concept based on the requirements of your vehicle in case of an emergency.
let's show you I would like to show you some highlights about our vehicle adaptation so in this case we do have two examples for you to show you once the direct wheel hub adaptation and furthermore the free spinning wheels that we can provide for you the direct wheel hub adaptation is a simple mechanical concept in design with no spe special preparation on your vehicle. Um, the installation inside the test cell will be a little bit more higher than by using the free spinning wheels um, for half realistic stand conditions. Also with this kind of concept, the vehicle evacuation will be difficult because of the fixed wheel hub connection and also the missing wheels on the vehicle. The second solution would be the free spinning wheels, where this is our own design from Horiba, where we have special competence at. So this enables you to have realistic driving and stand condition. This is easy to install because the preparation is done not in the test cell, it is done in the preparation phase of the vehicle. And also what is possible at this point is the vehicle evacuation with these free spinning wheels. Let's have also a closer look on the necessary um, of vehicle lifting. If you need to prepare your car and connect it to um, the powertrain setting, you will need to have, in some cases, a vehicle lifting. So here we do have different kind of solutions. We can offer you some common lifting systems, which were um, which we can provide in different standard solutions and also depending on your requirements. This has a very cost attractive um, solution for this part. But we can also uh, offer some customized lifting system, which we were up with uh, four independent lifting columns and an integration of the wheel fixation. This one can be also shared and moved to other test beds you have. It is possible to set up different shaft highs and this is done by a step lift, stepless lifting function in the system. And it is easy to install. Let's have also a closer look into um, some applications. As you see here, this is in the field um, of a sports car these examples here in the right uh, in the right picture. This is a high vehicle testing at Horiba powertrain test facility in Troy in USA from Horiba. There we can, for example, perform performance test, top speed test, efficiency torque vectoring, where Dirk Kaffenberger later will show you some examples on the chassis dyno, but as well wheel slip and curve impact. At this point, I would like to point the wheel slip that we can provide to you. The wheel slip simulation, for example, and also the um, road load simulation is done by our control system Spark, which is a powerful and high efficiency control test and controller, where you were able to set up different kind of wheel slips and also the environment for us, and especially also the road load for it. So at this point, I would like to overhand to my colleague Dirk Kaffenberger, who is giving you an insight in the vehicle testing on the chassis dynamometer. Thank you for now. Thank you, Alex. So I want to tell you something about chassis dynamometer, what you can test for your electrical vehicles or other all other vehicles on a chassis dynamometer. You know, the, the V diagram, okay, you're beginning with the development and at the end of the whole procedure, then there is then there is a whole vehicle acceptance that you can do on our chassis dynamometer. What application we can offer or what, what we, we have offered or we have done in the past. The brain of every system is, from my point of view, here's the automation system. In our case, it's called STARS automation system. The controller is, as Alexander mentioned, we have a Spark controller for all our products in 
every every spark controller has a special design and we called it spark vehicle if you have also what's coming more and more you have to you have to manage also the facility for example if you have an altitude chamber to to set the demand values for for temperature or altitude for that you need an a management system on top you can cover that with stars and on top you need a, a a management system for your whole tests that it's called enterprise where you also store all all data which you have done from the motor motor or engine dyno over driveline dyno to to chassis dyno that you can save all measured data in one database so applications where we what we have done in the past very much you know that i think are the emission chassis dynos on top, we have now uh, altitude simulation, what also can be in, integrated in a chassis dynometer a test cell. Battery testing is now, we have own competence with FuelCom, and that's also we can integrate in that STARS automation system and can offer that to you. Endurance tests and also we have done in the past a lot of times. What is new later, I would want to tell you that torque vectoring that means we called it RTE plus that you can test an unknown vehicle very simple on a chassis dynamometer. Simultan driving was only one time an inquiry. We don't realize it, but technically it's 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 possible. You run on a on a road your vehicle. We hand over the data directly to the chassis dyno and and run the test. Also in our portfolio is now an NVH chassis dyno and coming soon an EMC dyno. NVH dyno is normally from the diameter a little bit different to our standard emission chassis dyno from 48H, it changed to 75 inch. And the new, totally new department we have now, it's CUF, that means real world simulation. We, we have a video on the top of the, the vehicle and we stimulate the sensors of the vehicle and that they can do the same like by simultan driving the vehicle. What is also new by electrical vehicle here, and only an example, what power we need from the from the chassis dyno. If you only in the example of the Tesla S, we have 950 Newton meter, that's about 500 kilowatt. And the transmission is one to 10. So we have at the tires 9,500 Newton meter. If you calculate it over the region, so you need 27,000 Newton of, if you want to check the full power of a vehicle on a chassis dyno. Okay, normally it's it's shared, not 50, 50, 70, 30, 70, or something at like that percent only. Okay, if you have 50, 50, then it's 30,500 Newton, Newton. Which dyno we can offer for you for that? We have two types. We have the standard middle motor with 350 kilowatt and 500 kilowatt overload per axle, or a Vulcan Evo. It's shown here. We have also a totally new design with a with a motor in the drum. They can offer 700 kilowatt to 900 kilowatt per axle. We have such a query, and we're working at the moment for a big customer here in Germany for such solution, but it's also, they also testing a lot of uh, racing cars. What's also what we changed is, is the motor type. By such high power, the motor size will first will be very, very great. And so we decided to go with the synchro motors, with, with this much more smaller and has a, a better efficiency. And from the torque, we have a 24 pole machine instead of a six pole AC machine. So the torque is, is coming much more smooth and better by a an, by an synchron motor. What is new in the, the, the test facility or in our test stand? Um, we have, we can offer now, for example, if you have an electrical vehicle and there is a fire detection we can offer now a total, totally new uh, decoupling system that decoupling full automatically. By one customer, it's now done. We have a chain on the rear side of the vehicle. We can open, you can open the door and take out the vehicle automatically, but it must outside area from the door. That you don't have every time on a, 
on an older test field, but if you have that, that we have realized that now one time. Also, what is new, uh, we, we have to think about how to reload the vehicle by endurance trust, especially. So we have now a solution that you can plug in, the, you can take in the, the, the plug, the reloading connector anytime. And we have now a sub supplier who simulate that the vehicle recognize uh, the plug isn't installed or isn't fixed. So you can go on with the endurance test. Other thing is if you have fuel cell vehicles, so there is a special, every customer has a special regulation from the safety. Here an example from one customer. Um, if you want to make the, to measure the consumption of such vehicles, you have to, to take the, the, the fuel or the, where the H2 from outside and one meter around the, the vehicle, that is an explosion proof area. You can only go there with special tools or something like that. Also new what's coming more and more that we are thinking about and we are discussing that with our sub supplier for big test fields. Every time you have a an, an, an net pulse and motor pulse. So, but why you don't make a, a greater DC nets to, to yeah, optimize your test field. You have also a higher efficiency and that's also at the moment in discussion with one customer who are totally interested on it because from the from the energy chain station they have to extend it and it makes more sense to have the, the, the power in one test field and share it to others sometimes you have generating mode sometimes you have motorized mode and then you can show it share it in in old in one circuit so now the next item is I want to show you which applications we can we can offer to you New is that you can do with all, also with combustion engine is vehicle loss measurements according to GDR 15. That's a special um, test procedure, what I can show you later. Also power measurement per tire we can offer now. Acceleration test, for example, we can offer there. You can check that everything is okay with your new vehicle. Also new is a curb test um, that you can set and release force by tire and then we release a road load simulation torque matching i'll also explain later a little bit more detailed what we have done also is nvh test in the past where we have now also a new product you can make the inside outside measurement resonance measurement in the vehicle was also very interesting for one customer we measure inside the vehicle the noise and run run a, a test over a ramp and look for all engine speed and where the loudest loudest noise was we go to that speed for example 110 kilometer and we run one hour and then repeat we called it calibration uh, run we check once more again it is any more by 110 kilometer and then perhaps it was by 109 and we move to 109 kilometer okay what we also have what you know i think is endurance test and and software for that also new is an ice plate simulation. That's not the real ice plate simulation. That is more um, a theoretical value because on the road you have you have 50 to 100 meter per second square later. I can explain more detailed about that. Then a new, totally new department is that vehicle radar system. And that is called CAF. There you can check on you can check the vehicles by by themselves by a video on the on the screen what i showed you before clear is what we have range determination and ev consumption measurement last but not least is then the battery emulator or simulator from fuelcom that we can integrate in a chassis dyno first i want to explain more details the gtr 15 what is what is what we can do here that we have done now by one customer. We, we have a special test cycle and that is described in the GTR 15. And then we can measure the AB value, the vehicle losses. And on top, we measure then the C value in the wind tunnel and together we have the road load. So you, you, you can save the, the, uh, the tests on the road 
uh, that takes a long time. Other thing, next thing is here also a nice example of power measurement of a hybrid vehicle. We can now measure it per tire. It's clear by four to four dynos. Here an ex example of a front driven um, electrical vehicle and rear driven combustion engine. You see on the front driven axle, we have the full load from the beginning. Rear axle is coming a little bit later from the combustion engine. Also, what we can offer is your an acceleration test. That was an example from one customer. They develop a totally new vehicle. And then different companies check that vehicle and compare it with competitors like ADAC or Automotor Sport in Germany. And every vehicle who this customer hand over to such companies run over our dyno and checks the acceleration, the power measurements and, and so on. By such dynos, okay, you, you have to think about which dyno is you need for that because that is by nine meter per second square. And from the inertia simulation comes then 17,000 Newton what you need. And for that, what I told you before by the Tesla, you can take a, a four to four Vulcan dyno or also a Vulcan middle motor is with 350 kilowatt is, is, is okay for that, for such tests. Next example, what also very, I think very, very nice because they were thinking about by a four independent electrical vehicle, what happens if I have an old tire on the left and the, and the right side, or an old tire on the left side and a new tire on the right side. So that means the diameter is different. And you see here on the rear axle, left and also the torque is different. And perhaps I think they want to optimize it. One thing is, okay, they can optimize the torque of the electrical motor. If you have a four independent motor system that you have a, the same torque. And that was a special uh, test what I have done by one customer. Next thing is also very interesting test for, for electrical vehicles. That's the so-called uh, curb test. That means you are, you are at the curb and you can set here a, a limit of, for example, 500 or 1000 Newton. And if that is reached, then we release the road load simulation and the vehicle is starting. And then you can check how to reduce the power of the electrical motors because otherwise it's perhaps a little bit dangerous and the handling of the vehicle is not, looks not so nice or is not well enough. Next, what, what also Alexander was um, telling you, I want to talk something about torque matching or tactic torque vectoring. We called it RDE plus. That means if you have a, a, a vehicle from, from a competitor or your own vehicle, you don't know the, the road load, you can go to the, to the, to the road. We measure only the, the throttle and, and the speed. And that one-to-one -one we can, we can take on a chassis dyno and and then you can make the same test on the on the dyno for that you can use also our ads evo that is now a totally new auto, um, autopilot or on top with a meter system that is more for combustion engine i think at the end what's also what you have to think about is for for what you need endurance tests, all electrical vehicles has to, to make an, an acoustic acceptance test at the end. Different countries has different procedure. For example, in Germany, you have to run six, six hour uh, a cycle with different load and different speeds. And then you have to interrupt it 12 hour and then you have to repeat it up to 10,000 kilometer. And then you, you have to make the the acoustic test to get the release from the, yeah, for example, KBA Kraftfahrzeug Bundesamt here in Germany. That's allowed that you can sell the vehicle in your country. Other solution what we offered or where we are nearly at the end of the clarification with one customer, they want to make an ice plate simulation. Um, that means we have a limit, also a torque limit on one, on one tire you can set. But as I, I, I said to you, that's not realistic. But to check only the, the engine unit control or the 
the control of every uh, electrical motor. They want to accelerate one tire as much as possible. We, we accelerate it in, in acceleration mode with 25 uh, meter per second square, and then they can look how they want, they have to reduce the torque of that motor, let it go back. That's the idea of that customer who wants to check it. That. So now something a little bit more to the new department, CAF department for autonomous driving is that at the end you have a video and we stimulate our, our sensors that it's, it means it's on the road. What we want to do is, for example, the emergency brake test with maximum, we decided 10 meter per second square because we also have to think about then for wheel hub system, for the restraint system, because that is up to 30,000 Newton. Also, what we are planning is, is a steering a simulation on a dyno. We only checked on what is possible at the moment. Maximum steering would be five degrees. But we also in development at the moment to have a steering dyno that we can go with the steering of the, of the vehicle uh, on the front axle with, with the rollers. We want to make the, the same angle to have the same situation like on the road. Next thing is what we have now with, with fuel coming together, but it's we have the experience now with battery emulator and simulator. One customer said to me, yeah, for endurance test, he don't want to test the battery. He wanted to have a battery simulator at the end. Okay, I said, no problem. We have now fuel con. I, I can offer that to you. Next is clear. We have also that that EV range measurement and EV cons power consumption measurement. That's a very simple test. We have two types at the end. You run a WLTP in Europe, in, in US, it's a little bit different. It's an, an highway and urban test. It's very similar. The two types only say, okay, that depends on the, on the capaci capacity of the battery. Type one is only repeat the WLTP and uh, type two said, okay, please run one time WLTP and then drive constant 100 kilometer and then you you have to repeat it normally we have we do that with the autopilot what you see here on the left side that's our own ads evo that we can offer now the test you know it's it's not very, very powerful for that you can take a normal standard vulcan with 155 kilowatt so but i come to the end i only want to say uh, show you now different highlights what i think what i what we can promote because for electrical vehicles we need a, we have a more powerful motor and so it makes sense to have also a very good response time and our dynos i think have a very good response time from 20 to 30 milliseconds what we what we have at the moment on our dyno we are working on it to get better results i told you with that with that um, synchron motor in the roller, but that is in testing and that is perhaps in the next webinar, I can promote that, I can show you the results. Also very good, what, what is, is uh, a courtesy, because according to GTR 15, what I told you before, for the, to measure the vehicle losses, it makes sense to have a high, a very accurate chassis dyno. And you see here, I have here 12,500 Newton per axle and I have done a coast down and I have, I have a, a accuracy of lower than one Newton. But here, every conditions must be stable, temperature, air, air conditions and so on. Capacity losses must be measured before. That's the reason why we set by same conditions over one week or four weeks. We have now measurements over two weeks. We are inside from, so from to two Newton. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your time. So I can hand over to Alexander Seibel. Thank you, Dirk, for this insight of vehicle testing on the chassis dyno. I would like to summarize and uh, give you a small outlook at the end before we are coming to the Q&A session. So let's open the summary again up 
with a statement from our side. Oribo is your trusted partner for measurement and testing solution. So if you have the same goal and the same targets, especially the same visions in the field of electrification, we would be more than happy when you get in contact with us to discuss our solutions we have provided to you in this webinar. So um, let's have also a, a closer look into our R&D department. Um, our R&D department is um, working daily to improve um, our solutions, ourselves, also in the field of electrification. And therefore, we have um, further ongoing topics which we are developing and working on. Um, as you can see here on the right side, this is our lab uh, in Vaco in Japan, where we do have fuel cell testing, battery testing, powertrain engine, chassis dyno, and also what Dirk already mentioned, our enterprise lab management install. So in this lab, we are doing further investigations also on fuel cell powertrain connections, and also in general about the connection of different type of test cell to combine them from a component level up to the system level, and from the system levels, combining them to full vehicle level testing in combination with different type of simulation technology. So again, you are very welcome to join us on this road of electrification. And please get in contact with us if you have the same vision, and if you do have some more questions about this. Thanks a lot for joining this. We are at the end, and we are starting the Q&A session. Yes, we're coming to the Q&A session now. So first things first, thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Dick, for this very interesting presentation and the insights you provided. Um, we already got some questions in, and I would start right away. So the first one that came in is, where do you see the trend going for the speed in e-motor testing? OK. Um, yeah, so the, the speed, um, the, the trend for the speed, um, as we mentioned it, um, is, going, is going to be increased from year to year. So we did see the trend at the moment um, around 30,000 RPMs for the e-motor. And um, I guess pretty much the same for the input dyno machines. Okay, thank you. The next one that came in, um, I would give to you, Dirk. It says, can you tell us a bit more about real curve simulation? Okay, real curve simulation, what we, what we want to do here is, I told you that we want to do that up to five degrees from the from the vehicle model. You can calculate if you have we, we measure the, the angle at, at the steering, and from the model you can calculate if it's two, one, two, or three degrees the difference between front and rear side, and that is in the first step we want to to control that or that's the amount value for the differential controller um, speed controller on a four to four dyno. Next step is also on top. You go with with the angle with the with the front axle rollers by one or two degree uh, decrease. Yeah, hmm? that is that is the plan there. Okay, thank you, Dirk. Um, next one would be: Do you have concepts to move from an ICE application to an e-motor application? No, oh, that's a good question. So yes, we do have several uh, type of concept to move or help you moving from the ICE applications um, that you might already uh, run for a couple of years to an e-motor application. So there we can help you with um, the mechatronics. So that means um, we can provide you um, a kind of update set to move from the ICE driven um, powertrain to an e-motor but also to keep the possibility to run both on the test bed, but also on uh, the software application side. Uh, we do have some solutions also to run both at the end and also to switch easily from one to the other application. Okay, thank you. Um, another one that came in, is it possible to run emission measurements on a powertrain dyno for a hybrid application? 
Yes. So this is um, also possible. We do have the possibility to connect our um, emissions equipment also to the powertrain applications. And therefore, um, we do have a special solution which is um, comparable to the solutions we have on the chassis dyno with the same calculations and same outputs that we do have on the chassis dyno. So that makes it at the end comparable to the solutions and also to the measurements you have done on the chassis dyno. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next one is, how do you take the EV from the chassis dynamometer if a fire is detected? Yeah, I, I, showed, I showed that in, in one slide. Um, we have the special restraint system and we, we fix a chain from the beginning on the rear side of the vehicle. And uh, if we have fire detection, we can disconnect but decoupling the wheel hub fixation system, we open the door and then you can take out full automatically by a, by a long chain the vehicle from the, the vehicle from the test stand. Okay, thank you. Um, let me check if there another one came in. Okay, it looks like that is it for today's question. So again, thank you for, for the presentation. Thank you all for attending. If you have any further questions, please come back to us. We are happy to answer them. So thank you very much for attending and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye.